as the dawning of the day moves us from darkness to light, so will the entrance of God's Word lighten up your life. Stay tuned for the teaching ministry of Charlotte Faber as she presents this light with Bringing to Light Ministries. Today is a, your day for victory in Jesus. Good day to you, and I'm so glad that you have tuned into our program. We're excited about the new series that we're going to actually begin today. So I trust that you have your Bibles and you would go ahead and turn to John chapter 14. Jesus speaks some powerful words in this chapter. In fact, it's my favorite chapter in the whole Bible because it's loaded with so many truths. But we're going to focus in on greater works, shall we do? You know, Jesus was very clear in this chapter that if we would believe upon Him, that we can not only do what He does, but we could do greater works. And I'm excited about that word, and I am trusting God for that. So be sure you have your Bibles ready. And right now, Shante has a special word she's going to be sharing with you. Hello, I'm Shante Hawkman. In Exodus 12, we learn about the Passover and how God delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. God spoke to Moses and Aaron that for every house to take a lamb, a spotless lamb without blemish, and to sacrifice it and to take the blood upon the doorpost of each house. This blood would represent a token or a covering that the children will be protected from the plague of destruction. And God is this lamb. He represents this lamb from this passage. And we know that Jesus Christ has come as the sacrificial lamb for you and me, that he loved us so much that he gave his life for us and that he wants us to welcome him into our lives. And as we allow God to, to come into our lives, that that blood is a covering over our hearts and over our lives and that it protects us from eternal destruction that as we ask Jesus to be our Lord, that the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, is a covering over us that we can have eternal life through Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that Jesus was without spot or blemish, and that He came with, and He knew no sin, but He came to die for you and me to take our sins. And as we confess our sins, God is faithful and He is just to forgive us from all of our sins and all of our unrighteousness. If you have never asked Jesus to be your Lord, I would love to invite you to pray with me today. And if you are living in sin and not serving God right now, I would love for you to pray with me. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just ask you to come into my heart today to be my Lord and to be my Savior. Father, thank you that you sent your only son, Jesus, as a sacrificial lamb, the ultimate sacrifice, that I could be free from my sin. I ask you to come into my life today to be my Lord and to be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you for praying this prayer with me. We would love to hear from you. We have a packet on salvation that we would love to send to you. So please call or write to us, and we want to hear from you and hear what God is doing for you. May God bless you, and we love you. Well, praise the Lord. Well, I'm trusting that you have found John 14 in your Bible. And before we read many of these verses, let's write, if you will, look at verse 12. The scripture has verily, verily, this is Jesus speaking. I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And the beautiful thing about the greater works, it, it could happen because when Jesus went to the Father, we know that he sent the Holy Spirit into the earth. 
We know that there was 120 in the upper room that was baptized with the Holy Spirit. It appeared as cloven tongues of fire and it set upon each one of them. We see the power of the ministry through their lives, even with Peter when he preached. And there was 3,000 that gave their hearts to the Lord. And then a little bit later, 5,000 more. So we began to see that the same Holy Spirit that worked in Jesus' life begins to work in these multitude. And now around our globe today, there are many that have been filled with the Holy Spirit and they are doing the works of Jesus. Now, what I'm longing for in the days that we live in is seeing the miraculous. I believe the Lord wants to do the miraculous. You know, we read about the miracles, the, if you will, the signs and the wonders that operated through Jesus' ministry. And then later the disciples' ministry and through the book of Acts, we see these glorious things that took place. And I want to see those. Are things like that happening today? Yes. I mean, I hear the glorious events. I know even through our ministry, we've seen some truly some miraculous things take place. And that was done through the power of the name of Jesus. But I'm believing that it's going to visit our churches more in this day than ever in the days before because we need a revival. And I do believe just as we see when there, when there was the miracles that were taking place, people would hear about those and they would come from every direction to be a part of what God was doing by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So with that in mind, let's begin in verse 1, looking at the words of Jesus. He said, let not your heart be troubled. And if you will, he's saying, don't you let your heart be troubled. Now, that is really telling us you don't have to let your heart be troubled. Now, are there times that we do feel troubled about things? Yes, we do. But I think it has a lot to do with what we do in those moments. If we stay in that place, then we're going to continue in that vein. And we're not going to be free, if you will, to move in what I believe the Lord has for us. So he says, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. There's something about placing our trust or our belief in Jesus Christ knowing that he is the Almighty and we don't have to be troubled. Now, let's, let's walk through this just for a moment. If there's something that comes to me that troubles me, let's say I just heard a horrible story on our news and it begins to weigh on my heart and I begin to feel troubled about that story. Well, I can stay in that place or I can run to the Lord and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, this is what, Lord, I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. But, God, I am bringing it to you. First of all, I take the care of this situation, and I cast it over upon you, Lord, for you care for me, and you care about this situation. And, Father, I'm going to war. I'm going to come against the devils that may be working in this situation. And then, Father, I am believing you on the authority of your word. For, Lord, you have said this, and I will begin to quote to him the promises of God. I'm going to pray on the authority of the word. But, you see, if we're not cautious, we will take the care. We will take the care. We will take the anxiety of that situation and let it weigh upon our hearts. And that's not the will of the Lord. You see, we're going to become effective children of God when we begin to ask the Father in Jesus' name to intervene in those situations. I'm seeing more and more the importance of prayer. I've known that prayer was important, but it's just like my eyes have been open to some truths that I personally have never seen before concerning prayer. But you see, as much as the Lord wants to do things in the earth, He wants this revival. He wants the miraculous to take place. You see, He is waiting upon people to trust Him, to believe Him, to ask Him, and to keep on asking, and to stand with thanksgiving and praise concerning the things that we are believing for. So I'm trusting that when we talk about revival, that you burn in your heart for a desire of the move of the Holy Spirit. And you will join me and others as we ask our God to pour out of His Spirit 
upon all flesh and that we will see the miraculous. Now in verse 2, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If you are born again today, I want you to know that Jesus is preparing a place for you. He is preparing a place for me. And I tell you, as I have, I have spoken with many people that have had, if you will, the privilege of going to heaven and being able to come back and to tell the story about it, it's a beautiful thing to hear. And I know that even recently, a dear friend of mine, she was having surgery. And uh, for some reason, she left her body and she went to be with the Lord. She talked about sitting with Jesus and him talking to her and how that Jesus said to her, but you have to go back. And she said, oh, Lord, let me stay. And she said that even she stomped her feet and said, Jesus, let me stay. Don't make me go back. And the Lord began to say to her that there was a purpose and a reason for her to come back into the earth. But I know one thing is as she spoke into my life, the things that she was able to talk with Jesus about and the things he spoke into her life. And I just want to share a couple of those with you. At one point, I'll share what she saw about me as she looked down into the earth. And uh, I would just, I mean, the tears was pouring when she began to talk about her experience. But one thing that she said, she sat down with Jesus and there was three young men that were over to the side. And they kept looking at my friend and waving her to come, you know, come over with us. And uh, she looked at Jesus and she said, Jesus, may I go over there with these young men? And uh, Jesus said, not now. And so she paused and she looked back at them. And Jesus said, you don't know who they are, do you? And she says, no, Lord, I don't. She said, do you remember those three children that you miscarried? And she, her cha she said, I felt my countenance change. And she said, yes, Lord. I gave them all three males names. And Jesus said, yes, you did. And it was males. Those are your three sons. I want you to know heaven is a real place. And we all have those that we've loved and they've gone on to be with the Lord. And as sad as it is on this side of eternity, I want you to know if they had given their hearts to Jesus, they are there. And they will see you and you will see them. And we will enjoy eternity together. There was another story I thought was very interesting. And this had to do with a particular lady. She too is my friend in the church. But this man came up to the one who had passed away. And the friend, uh, this man began to say to my friend, said, uh, I want you to tell someone hello in the earth. And she said, well, who is it? Well, she, he began to say, it's this person, said, I am her father, and she's been concerned about me, but I want you to know that I'm here, and I want you to know that you can tell her I'm here. Well, this friend whose father had already gone to heaven, she was concerned about him. She was concerned about his salvation, and it had been something that she'd even talked with her family about. But you see, the Lord allowed this friend of mine to know that he was there. Heaven is a real place, and we're going to go there someday. And the Lord has prepared us a mansion. And Jesus said, if it were not so, I would have told you. And then in verse 3, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So, you know, when I begin to think about a natural death, uh, I've heard many people say, don't you see him? You know, when they're dying, they look up in, into the, like the ceiling area and they say, oh, don't you see him? He is so beautiful. Well, who are they seeing? Well, you know, I have no way of knowing that. But, you know, it, whether it's Jesus, whether it's an angel, some have said there is a group and they're beautiful. Don't you see them? They're so beautiful and they've come for me. And we could go on and on with our stories of people that are stepping from earth into eternity. But there is also an aspect of truth in this, that Jesus is coming back. 
He's going to come back and he's going to rapture the church. We call it the catching away. We're going to be caught up to be with the Lord forevermore. I don't know when Jesus is coming back, but I want you to know those who have accepted him as Lord and Savior, he is coming to take them home. Now, verse 4, And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. But Thomas said unto them, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? But Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, this is truth. And many people want to say there are many highways to heaven. There's many ways to heaven. That is not true. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And it's very clear that no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. You know, it always concerns me when I ask someone, you know, are you going to heaven? Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? And they can respond, well, I sure hope so. I try to be a good person. I don't care how good anybody is. Their goodness is not going to, what's going to get them to heaven. It's a believing in Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. It is called the new birth. When we receive Jesus into our hearts, we are born again, meaning we become a new creature created in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So it's accepting Jesus into our hearts. Now in verse 7 it says, Jesus speaking, If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Now Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. In other words, we'll be satisfied if we can see the Father. But Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Now, this is very powerful because what I want you to know, that when Jesus came into the earth, he was God, he's, he's always been God. Even in the womb of Mary, Jesus was God. When he was born, Jesus was God. He was God all through his life, and Jesus is very much God today. He's part of the triune being, meaning God the Father, God the Son, and if you will, the Holy Spirit, three in one. But what we see with Jesus is in all that he did in the earth, he did not do it with the divinity, with the, if you will, the concepts of his being God. We're going to see this truth in our study. But everything Jesus did, he operated as a man anointed by the Spirit of God. This was the only way that Jesus could be your example and my example. You see, if he operated in his divinity, in his being God, then I could never follow the Lord. I could never do the works that he's done. I could never do the greater works because I am a woman and he would be God. So we see that, yes, he was and he is God, but he is a man. And as he began to do the work of ministry, we see him praying. We see him sometimes praying all night long, getting the will of the Father so that he could operate again as a man anointed by the Spirit so that he would be our example. And at the same time, to see God, if you will, personified in the one Jesus Christ. So you want to know who God is, what God is like? Well, I want you to know you can see that in the life of Jesus Christ. So notice what he says here in verse 10. He said, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So all that we see operating in and through Jesus Christ, 
Jesus said, it's the Father that does the works through me. And this is exactly what we need to know about our walk here on the earth. It's going to be the Father through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit that's going to do the work in and through our lives. Even as I do the television program, I realize my inabilities. I just simply know that it's God who has called me. And as I am faithful to yield to Him, it is He that will do the works through me. You see, if I could touch a heart and, and cause that heart to be turned toward the Lord, making Jesus the Lord of their lives, I would want to do that. But I can't do that. All I can do is come to the Word, present Jesus Christ to those who will listen. And it's only He that can do the work. I can't heal any sickness or disease. But He, the Almighty God, can do that miraculous work for you and for others. It is Jesus. He is now seated at the right hand of the Father. He has been exalted above every name. The name of Jesus is high and lifted up. But when we begin to look at the works of Jesus in our Bibles, you must be reminded that he did what he did as a man. A man, if you will, just like you and a man just like me, okay? And with that, he followed after the Father through prayer, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit again, so that he would be our example in how we are to live our lives, okay? Verse 11, believe me, Jesus said that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. You are seeing the works operating in and through my life, and it's only by the leading of the Father that these things can be done. So believe me because of the work's sake. And then back to our verse, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. What a powerful promise that is. And then 14, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, I know the principle of John 16, 23, when Jesus said in that day, you shall ask me nothing, but anything you would ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So we have been given the privilege of asking in Jesus' name. And God has promised through his word that what you ask, he will do. What a privilege and what a powerful thing. Are we asking? Are we daring to believe our God for the miraculous? Are we desiring God to use us in the works that Jesus did and, if you will, the greater works? This is my heart's desire that once again we see the blinded eyes open, the deaf hear and the dumb speaking, and I believe you desire that too. It's been such a joy to minister God's Word to you. We're going to be back here next time talking about these things, so come prepared and ready, and I'm trusting that you will have ears to hear what the Spirit of Almighty God would say to you. So let us hear from you. Let us know what God is doing in and through your life. Now until next time, may God bless you and I love you. I love you all. Hello, I am Shantae Hawkman. Do you know how much Jesus loves you? We hear the song of Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And little ones to him belong, and they are weak, but he is strong. But the truth of that is so simple, that God loves you so much. Sometimes we try to search for that love, that true love in our life, or things to fill that void or emptiness in our hearts. Sometimes people in the world will go towards drugs or alcohol or even just trying to succeed at one thing and then the other. And just the busyness of our lives, sometimes we forget about the love that God has for us and that how much He wants us just to stop in the day and spend that special time with Him in prayer and in worship. 
For we know the Bible in John 3, 16 says, For God so loves the world that he gave his only son Jesus, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. In verse 17, it says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus didn't come to condemn us or to make us feel less than. And sometimes we feel like we're not even worthy enough to come before him. But God wants us to come to him, to come boldly. It says in Hebrews in chapter 4 and verse 15, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time or need. This verse says that Jesus, he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities, our weaknesses, the things that we face every day, that God, he knows our heart and he knows where you are today. And I just wanna come and just encourage you that whatever you are facing, if there is an addiction in your life, God can set you free from it. There is nothing impossible through Jesus Christ. And he wants you to come into him and to call upon him. Romans 8, 13 says, call upon the Lord and you will be saved. God wants you just to come to him and come boldly to the, his throne and find that grace and that help in the time of your need. Whatever it is, I want to pray a prayer with you today and that God can deliver you and just minister his healing touch to you. Father, I come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I just lift up every person today, Lord, that is listening. And Father, I thank you for ministering to their need today. That God, you see them there and you know their need. And God, we know that nothing is impossible with you. And as we call upon your name, Jesus, that you are there. That you never leave us and you never forsake us. And that you are always there to, to comfort us and to strengthen us. And Father, I ask you to meet that need today in every life. And God, I thank you for it. And I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Jesus. I know the Lord has touched you today. But please write to us or call us and let us know what God is doing for you. We have several packets on, on healing and, and uh, believing God and, and for salvation and deliverance. And there's many things that my mom has taught. And if there's a teaching that you need, please feel free to call and request that CD. But we just will continue to pray that God will minister to you and your needs today. And we love you and we, and we just bless you today. 